What up, what up, what up? Let's get right to the shits. Let's get right to the information. As you guys know, I'm nearing the completion of my new album. It's called Killing Time. So what I want to do is I want to break down a few things about the album. Give y'all an inside look. First off, the meaning behind the name Killing Time. It has three separate meanings. Uh, one, Killing Time is basically uh, something you do when you're preparing for something else. Like, for example... Maybe this album is called Killing Time because I got something else in the works that's going to follow this album. So in the meantime, this is something to tide you over to kill some time. Also, Killing Time means, yo, fuck the plan. It's Killing Time. When it comes to these verses, we killing them. When it comes to these songs, we killing them. It's not go time. It's Killing Time. Another reason, uh, another... Uh, name for what killing time means another representation is you know how when you get older they say that you're too old to do music or you're too old in the hip-hop community to have a passion for your rapping and shit this is killing the time restraints on saying that you're too old to do any particular style of music you know what i'm saying we're killing the time we we're not restricted by the time schedule we killing that off so those are the three meanings behind the album Killing Time. Now, um, as an artist, there's something that I felt that, you know, the progression. Um, lyrically, I feel like this is my best work. For a while, I felt like Heart of a Lion, Blood of a King was my best work. And then what I did was I had to go back to Heart of a Lion, Blood of a King and see what I did wrong with that album. Now, for example, what I did wrong with Heart of a Lion, Blood of a King was there wasn't any songs on there for the female demographic. So if I was showing the music to females, there really wasn't anything that would particularly catch their attention. You know, there was the song about my wife. There was the song um, about my daughter and the, and the uh, you know, me trying to fight for my daughter and all that other stuff. So, but that necessarily, those was like deep records. That wasn't, uh, that wasn't records like, you know, that women typically listen to. You know what I mean? So I had to go back to that album and find ways to improve on what I had already did. So I thought I took what I thought was a classic album and, and refined it and tried to find ways to make the project better. You know what I mean? So on this particular album, it has more of a diverse sound. Um, it has what I like to call a bounce. Like um, on Heart of a Lion, Blood of a King, I didn't have any records that I could pretty much perform like at a club or anything like that. You know what I mean? You know, when you do a record at the club, the shit's got to be knocking. It's got to be, you know, where people want to get up and dance and make moves and do things like that. Heart of a Lion, Blood of a King was mostly like a, a boom bap type of album, which I thought was fucking fire. You know what I'm saying? It suited my style perfectly, but those elements were just missing from that particular project. So I made sure that I rectified that on this album. So now I have some records that I could perform. I have some records to get people out of their seats. I have some records that will make you want to keep put pressing the repeat and doing your little dance to the shit and, you know what I'm saying, making your little moves and, and whatever's whatever, you know what I mean? So that's some of the things that I had to do with this album. You know, it's like as an artist, what you want to do is you want to you want to constantly improve. You want to grow. You want to do things that you haven't done on the other projects because, in my opinion, you're not really supposed to judge an artist based on every single person that's around him. You should judge an artist based on their prior and their previous work. If an artist is making progress and every album is getting better, then you know that that artist is on the right track. You know what I mean? But there's some artists that are just stagnant and they don't try to improve. They just do the same thing over and over again. I wanted to rectify that situation. I wanted to make sure that there was something for everybody on this album. And there definitely is. So as of now, <clears throat> we got uh, 14 records. I'm waiting on two R&B verses to come back. One from Oscar D. One from the other homie, Brandon. And I'm waiting on the verse from True Words. Once I get those verses, then I can lay down one last verse for the record that I'm doing with True Words. And do the hook. And then I could uh, send the album off for mastering. As you know, the album is already done. I'm thinking about doing physical copies as well, so I have um, an alternate cover that I might use for physical copies, you know, just to give a different feel. You know, the online, you know, you got collectors, there's people out there that prefer physical copies. I usually don't make physical copies because 
there's really no market in the shit. And I know in the past I've handed out tons of fucking CDs. And when I reach back out to people and ask them, did they listen to the shit? They say no. You know what I mean? So it makes the artist feel like shit when you go through all this time to manufacture something just to give it to somebody. And they just sit on the shit and they don't do nothing with it. So I've decided, you know, like going forward, I wasn't really going to do any physical copies. Because I don't want to just manufacture shit for people not to listen to the shit. It's a waste of time. And I know that we're in a digital age to where everything is going digital anyway. So we don't necessarily need physical copies, in my opinion. But it is good to have just in case. You know what I mean? Just in case. I may do like a small limited run, maybe 100 CDs or whatever. It just depends. I may use it for some giveaways with private road clothing, throw a CD in there with a shirt or something like that, you know, I'll figure something out, I haven't figured out the marketing plan that I'm going to do as far as the physical CDs, I have everything lined up for the digital, but just not the physical shit, so now you have an inside look on what the album is as far as, um, you know, as far as the type of music that's going to be on there, the shit is crazy, from the very first song on there, the shit is, shit is a vibe, as soon as you hit play, you're going to be like, yo, this shit is fucking crazy, it's definitely my best work, and I recommend you having some decent headphones and and listening to my album with some headphones on. It's a whole different experience. You feel like you're right there. You feel like you're inside of the music, and when, when I'm rapping these stories and telling these stories and talking about life and aspirations and goals and motivational things in the music, it, it, it touches you in a different manner than just... You know, listening to the shit in the car speaker or whatever the case may be. It's like, take some time out. Zone out to the shit. Smoke a blunt to the shit. Listen to what the fuck I'm talking about. You know what I mean? You get to learn a lot about an artist when you really listen to the shit that they talk about and the way they phrase things and, and the stuff they talk about. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, I, I touch on a whole bunch of things. There's one of these joints in there called The Coming of Age Part 1. And it's a story. And the story's going to be split up probably... To four or five different songs. And the first three verses detail, you know, a young man growing up in the ghetto. And some of the stuff that he has to go through, his challenges. He has a regular job. His friends are hustlers. So they always clown him because he got a job. Uh, he got a job washing dishes at the hotel. You know what I mean? So they clown him saying, yo, how you going to get bitches and you washing dishes, my nigga? <laughs> So it's like, it's a coming of age story about some of the shit that this guy goes through. I'm not going to spoil the plot, but the shit is so deep that the shit can be turned into a movie. Like, the shit is that fucking crazy. But I'm breaking it up into like four or five different parts. So that way you guys can really get the gist of how everything is. It's like a good movie, man. You know, sometimes you can't squeeze it all in on one song. It's going to take you five, six songs to really get the message across. You know what I mean? So that being said... There's a lot of joints on there. There's a lot of fire. It's a lot of heat. I appreciate everybody that's a part of the shit. And um, I just want the shit to be successful. I want you guys to be able to play the music, love the music, listen to it on the headphones. Tell some people about the shit. You know, as you see, I got a record right now that almost has a million streams. I'm not trying to stop. You know what I mean? I'm trying to keep doing as many records as I can. I want to collaborate with as many up-and-coming artists as possible. Um, you know, so once my album is done, once I wrap everything... There's going to be a, a, a time frame in between while I'm actually getting some promo and shit materials together before the, ac the album actually drops digitally. And I want to do some records with um, people, like, you know, up and coming artists and shit, and, and promote their shit, promote my shit. You know, because I feel like as artists, we lack the unity, man. Like, we all trying to get to the same place. And most of us have in house studios to where we could be working with each other. But the egos and, and, and the hunger for money and all this other shit is stopping a lot of us from working together. And I feel like as artists, we should be doing that shit. We should be working together. You know? So shout out to everybody that's doing music. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Killing time. Coming soon. It's your boy Noah Jones. I hope y'all support it, man. I dropped, um, I dropped the Coronation. And that whole album was produced by Anthony Skrilla Scratch. Fire album. But... It went under the radar. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people slept on it. Nobody really heard it. And that's my fault. You know what I mean? I realized that, one, I took too much time off in between Heart of a Lion, Blood of a King, and then dropping this album to where people just wasn't really checking for it as much. Also, what I did was 
you know, I tried to drop each song. Instead of dropping the whole 10 track album at one time, I dropped it individually, like one song a week for 10 weeks. When I shouldn't have did that because people's attention span is so fucking limited nowadays. They don't want to wait 10 weeks for some shit. When they want to hear some music, they want to hear the whole thing. So that was my fault, you know. But then again, like I said, as an artist, you got to learn. You got to grow. You got to figure out how you can improve. So this particular album, I didn't, I'm not doing that. I'm dropping it all at one time. I also noticed with the, with the album, The Coronation, even though the music was fire, the fucking artwork was trash. I went to somebody different. I tried to save money, thinking, okay, let me go to somebody else instead of using my usual guy. And the shit suffered. You know what I mean? People saw the album cover and they just wasn't fucking interested in the project. But I went back to my original guy for Killing Time. And as you see, the fucking artwork is fire. So, you know, sometimes as an artist, you got to do trial and error just to see the different results on how things are going to be. So I know going forward, only drop my singles as singles. Don't drop my album in single format. And don't use graphic designers that aren't up to par with my brand with my type of music and the quality level of the shit that I put out because it's going to end up suffering. So, it's a lesson to the artist, man. Um, also, another lesson to the artist, my nigga, if, if y'all are inspired or I mean, I'll be seeing what the, what the fuck y'all niggas be doing. Just give credit where credit is due, yo. There's nothing wrong with giving a nigga no credit. There's nothing wrong with saying, yo, the homie, shout out to the homie that's, uh, you know, that, that inspired me to do this because I'll be seeing y'all motherfuckers. I don't be announcing it because I don't want to seem like, you know, niggas will be trying to make it seem like I'm a hater. But I'll be seeing what y'all doing. You know, private road clothing is a brand, my nigga. And I know regular shit. So I'll be seeing what y'all doing. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. Everybody want to want to put out their own little shit. And I see, I see y'all niggas. I see. But there's a reason why this shit is different from me. Because I take pride in my shit. I do a lot of research. Quality gear, quality everything. Lyrical quality, the whole shit is quality. So... You know, give credit where credit is due, my nigga, because you never know. The people that you're not giving credit to be the main ones that are getting on. And when you try to reach back out later on, they all of a sudden, you can't even reach the motherfuckers. <laughs> try to hit that inbox and your ass is blocked because, you know, you're stealing motherfuckers' ideas but ain't giving nobody no credit. Or you're getting inspiration from people and you're not giving credit to the people that's inspiring you to do shit. You know what I mean? Give the flowers while, they, while the people are still around. Anyway, sorry for dragging on. That's the backstory. That's what's going on with the album. I love y'all. Noah Jones, Killing Time, coming soon. Peace.